Welcome to the DeFi Standard, and this is Mickey B. Fresh. The beginning of a decentralized empire with decentralized on-demand liquidity owned by the people for the people. That's exactly what DeFi is, and what is being built is going to change the world. So today we're going to go through some of the Flare Finance products, protocols, and tokens. We're not going to get into the actual technicals of how to set up for the beta. There's been numerous videos that have been gone over that, and I will link them in the description below. But today's video is really going to give an overall sense of what these products are that are being built on the Flare network by Flare Finance and what you could do with them and understand what they're meant to do. Before you get into the beta, if you want to participate, or if you don't, just to understand what DeFi means and how is it different from traditional finance. So let's go over here to a blog post that we have on our website, the DeFi Standard. Now, this explains the three different products that are on Flare Finance's interface. Now, they have a really slick interface, and it's it's a, made to be user-friendly, but it is still uh, for the advanced users who need to understand DeFi. Now, there's three different products on there. We have with... Uh, Flare X you have, we have Flare Wrap, and then we have Flare Farm. Now what's important to note here on Flare X, that is the decentralized on-demand liquidity. So there's two-sided li liquidity pools. So you could be a market maker, by providing liquidity to the pools. And then there's the market takers who are the traders who want to swap between those two assets. And now this is an important development in DeFi and it's one of the most revolutionary uh, financial designs to date because what it allows is deep liquidity for users on the network to interact with without having high speculate, speculative trading volume, like on central exchanges. So this allows regular retail users to participate as liquidity providers instead of just market makers setting the prices on order books. With this, you could just swap from, say, Spark to YFlare or YFlare to FXRP, just boop, and right through your wallet. That's on the market taker side. Now, on the market maker side, you're the liquidity provider. So now you have to put two tokens in to provide that liquidity. And there are certain risks that, that come with that, and that's impermanent loss. So we will get into that in future videos, but that's more of an advanced topic. Right now, we're just trying to explain what the different products actually are on Flare Finance. And this is like Uniswap. You got to think of FlareX. That's what it is, except you don't have the high gas fees. So this is going to allow multiple applications to use this and users right from their Flare wallets. You're going to be able to swap between these different assets. And there's going to be very little gas fees. You're not going to have to go to the exchanges. And it has deep liquidity. So you're always going to be able to go in and out and you'll have to pay small fees as you go in and out. And then there's also the ability to provide liquidity here. Now, if you provide the two token liquidity, you receive an LP token. Now that LP token, then you could put in Flare Farm. And I know that sounds like very complicated, but we're gonna cover that in the future. It's just something to understand here of what Flare X is. It's decentralized on-demand liquidity from an automated market maker. All right, so now let's move on to 
The Flare Wrap, which is also another interesting uh, protocol. So this is basically the bridge to the Ethereum network. So this will allow wrapped ERC20 tokens to come over from the Ethereum mainnet. So you could think of Link, you could think of um, Compound, any ERC20 token can be brought over and wrapped onto the Flare network as a Flare token then. So it'll be a Flare 20. Now, they're also going to be a stable coin that's going to be a basket of Tether, USDC, and DAI that's going to be called XUSD. Now, this is a centralized stable coin in a way, but what it does is it allows a USD pegged asset to be used on Flare Finance ecosystem right out the gate. And that's necessary because sometimes you want to just go into USD. And sometimes with the liquidity pools, you want USD and say FXRP in that liquidity pool. You want to, you want to go from FXRP to USD. It's not the ultimate stable coin. It's not like the decentralized stable coin that we talked about in previous videos. That is a separate project. So this flare wrap is really the pipeline to bring in all that ERC-20 value. All right, moving on. Now we're going to go over to Flare Farm. Now this is something new to myself and all of us, but this is the one product that probably will be the least risk because you only need to put in one asset and there's very high APY. So in the Flare Farm liquidity pools, you put in, say, FXRP. Now you mine YFIN. And now that's the main governance token on the Flare, Net, on Flare Finance. What's so fascinating about YFIN is there's only 11,000 tokens. And they only could be obtained by farming them out of Flare Farm. So you have to put in an asset and then you farm the YFIN. It goes a little further than that because on the Flare X liquidity pools, if you put in two tokens, you get an LP token. And then you take that LP token and put it into the Flare farm. And those will be higher APYs, but with that comes more risk. Now, I know this is, sounds like a lot of uh, very advanced stuff, but over time, you'll understand it. And here's just a little look at what the interfaces look like here on the dashboard. So you don't need to exchange, you don't need to use the exchanges. And that's one thing that's really, really going to be a big difference for us as a community, especially the XRP community. We're so used to using all these exchanges. When it comes to Flare, we're going to have Flare X, which is you're going to easily be able to swap any assets that are on Flare, including Spark, any F assets. You could just swap right in between them easily. There's no need to go back to exchanges unless you're cashing out to fiat. Now, moving on, flare wrap withdrawal. So you can withdraw back to Ethereum. You don't have to, but that option is there. And one more time, let's go through flare X because really flare X is what um, is the revolutionary design here. This is what's going to allow the liquidity to be bootstrapped. And in a sense, this is what RippleNet is doing at a more enterprise scale with proprietary tech. This is why the price of XRP does not need to be set. It's why it doesn't have to have a high valuation right out the gate. Because by putting in two assets by the market maker in the liquidity pool, they're always going to receive the same dollar value back when they pull those out. So the balance of the liquidity pool might change. So if XRP goes up in price, then they'll be then they'll have less XRP. If XRP goes down in price, then there'll be more XRP in the pool. So the market maker doesn't care if the cap appreciation goes up or down of the asset. What matters is that they're earning the fees on the transactions. And now on the other side, the market takers, they are going in and out swapping. So they don't care if the asset of XRP, for example, in ODL was 
a dollar twenty, and the next day it's a dollar sixty. It doesn't matter to them because they're going in and out so fast from USD to XRP and then to another pool to do the same thing. So this is why X pool with what RippleNet and them are doing is the same concept, but at a higher level with institutions and they're tying all the exchanges together in an inner exchange network because we're going to see this convergence of DeFi and institutional markets. Because like David Swartz said, the chicken and egg problem, you're never going to get liquidity on these exchanges by speculative trading to provide the liquidity that's necessary. You need liquidity pools to do that. And this is automated market makers is the solution here. On the XRP ledger, David Swartz has mentioned and other Ripple devs of adding a new object as an automated market maker, which would allow the XRP ledger's order book to then have an automated marker on automated automated market maker on top and that's allowing deep liquidity without the slippage now this is just the beginning of some of the defi protocols here and this is what's going to be the foundation for the future financial system like even the CFTC has done presentations to their actual commission so they have a tech uh, division, the CFTC, and they're thinking about a safe harbor. So right now, it's hard to regulate software, especially on liquidity pools where there's no counterparty. It's just software in the middle, and people are swapping from one to another. With PayString and Global ID, you're going to be able to attach identity to these wallets. So it's going to be really interesting how Flare Finance develops here. And they have these multiple tokens. So you're going to be airdropped Yflare. And then you're going to use it to mine Yfin. And you could use it in the liquidity pools, use it in Flare Farm. And there'll be more information released on that. But you're going to have, after the Spark airdrop, when Flare Network goes live, you're going to receive 15% of your allocation. Then in one month later, they're going to do a snapshot of your Spark tokens. In that interim month, you could earn more Spark by participating in all the things we've talked about in previous videos, like delegating your FTSO vote, minting F assets to earn, to earn daily Spark rewards. And that will build up your Spark, and you don't have to buy any. You can buy some too. So the more you accumulate, in that first month, the more Y flare you're going to be dropped. So that's a way to take advantage of early participation. So besides earning all that spark that's going to be worth a ton of value in the future, you're going to get more Y flare, which will then help get you going in the flare finance ecosystem. And we're going to have a flare wallet that will be easy to use. Right now, the beta is just using MetaMask. And I do want to warn everyone with the uh, beta they beta is meant to be beta so they might have bugs it's going to be a little frustrating to maneuver through certain things so be prepared for that that's what beta is for to work out all the kinks and monitor how the users and the uh, protocols react to certain market conditions so these assets will actually have prices and it will mimic like the market of a whale dumping the price moving it up and that will interact with you and how you decide to participate i mean you don't have to participate and try to win the competition and spend 24 hours a day doing it you could just go on there you know play around with the different pools understanding how the flare farm works how the flare x works now everyone who receives the airdrop of y flare of d flare is going to have to use FlareX to receive their Y Flare. So you might want to get used to doing that prior. That's one thing they did, the Flare Finance team, I think was brilliant. So these people that are earning their tokens for free, they're going to have to actually use the FlareX to get them. So that gets people onto the interface and they take a look there and they're going to be less likely to just take this thing and dump it. So 
there are a few exchanges supporting the Flare Finance. Uh, BitTrue is one. There's another one, BitCube. I forgot the name off the top of my head. But don't expect a tremendous amount of support from exchanges. This is DeFi. DeFi is meant to be used by retail directly on the network, not by exchanges. Even though they'll, they'll be possible integrations, this we have to understand it's decentralized finance or open finance. It means you could directly participate. And this is the early days of this, just the beginning. There's going to be other DeFi projects built on Flare as well. And the composability allows the projects, the protocols to interact with each other. With lending, borrowing, yield farming, liquidity pools, and they all work together. And they're foundational for a future financial system that eventually will be institutional grade. So Flare Finance says their products are going to be institutional grade. They're going through a security audit check right now. Um, they're also going to have uh, a certificate from, I believe, one of the security firms. We haven't got the details on that yet. So that's good to know that it's not just some random project being spun up like some of the scams that are on Ethereum. This is a 100% legit project. And there's been a lot of time, a lot of effort, and a lot of money put behind this project. So you do want to pay attention and you want to attempt to participate in this. This is the next level, and it is for the more advanced users. Now, the regular Flare Finance earnings that you get from just delegating your Flare Time Series Oracle vote and minting F assets and earning those rewards, you're going to be able to do all that simultaneously. And then if you want to participate in Flare Finance, you can. But that will be a month after the network goes live. And we really should be all paying attention to DeFi in the XRP community because that is the future. It's not just banks that are going to use XRP and that are going to use Flare. We are long past those days. The market has evolved. Even one from what Brad Garlinghouse has said, that a lot of these tokens are going to disappear. Well, the infrastructure tokens in Layer 1 blockchains, maybe some will consolidate. But now with these new DAO distribution method, the tokens are exploding. So it goes to show what was thought in 2018, 2017, 2019 doesn't apply anymore. The, the innovation is happening so fast that it, it's nearly impossible to predict. All right. So here's actually the interface of what it looks like here, where you would put in the two-sided liquidity pool. So you would put in Flare and Y Flare. And once you put in a certain amount on the left here, it will automatically match it to the dollar value of how much you need on this side. So you always have to put equal amounts in. And then you receive an LP token for that. But here's where the, the impermanent loss comes in. If, for example, Spark's price shoots up in value, you don't gain that capital appreciation of that Spark. Because the pool will balance out and you'll get less spark and more Y flare. But if spark's price decreased over that time period while you have your providing liquidity, you'll pull out with more spark when you do pull out. Now, by providing liquidity to these pools, you receive that LP token, which now you bring into flare farm. So once you swapped for tokens or created liquidity pairs, you can stake them to earn in two ways, both an APY annual percentage yield and the Flare Finance reward token YFIN. Now YFIN is the treasure on Flare Finance. That's what you want to try and get a hold of. It's only 11,000 supply. It's going to be worth hundreds of thousands of dollars, and it's going to gain a lot of attention because there's so little of it and it could only be obtained by Flare Farm. So the Flare Farm has two types of pools to stake in. First type is a single asset pool, like FXRP. You add your FXRP to the pool so others can borrow it. You earn APY, which you receive as YFIN reward. I don't believe that others can borrow it. This was an or this is a blog post from the beta. You just put your FXRP in there and you earn YFIN. So second type of pool is the two-sided. 
liquidity pool. That is how you receive the LP token, which represents the two assets that make up the liquidity pool on FlareX. You use the swap page and create your pool asset there. Then you come to the farm and you stake it. And it will say XUSD YFIN LP token. And that's the pool that you put the LP token in. And then you receive YFIN rewards for that. You control buttons below. Each pool allow you to stake and unstake as well as claim your YFIN rewards, which you then adjust your account balances and tokens. Now, important to note here, in Flare Farm, in the one-sided pools, if you put in FXRP, you do gain the capital appreciation in Flare Farm. Very important to note. So you could put in just FXRP and just mine YFIN. The APY might not be in the hundreds of thousands of percent like the LP token, but it's an option that's low risk and you could earn. And you'll also be earning your daily Spark rewards. So this is kind of what that looks like here. Oh, so here's the dashboard. So this is what it looks like for um, the LP token. You would have XUSD and YFIN LP pool. So that's the um, token. So you're putting in the LP token that represents the uh, XUSD and YFIN liquidity that you put in. So now this LP token earns you YFIN. And look at these APY rates. They are enormous. And now this pool pays out 51 YFIN per day. And, and only 11,000 um, YFIN supply. That is a lot. So there is potential here to make. And there are all easy to use buttons here. Stake, unstake, claim. And now you could pull out from the farms whenever you want. At any time of day. And you can redeem then your liquidity, uh, the tokens you put into the Flarex liquidity pools. And let's see, is there anything left? No, left. Oh, I'm gonna post this below in the link um, in the description. So you can look through the white papers. Um, Flare Finance is a short paper out right now. And we also have plenty of information here on DeFi and comparison to traditional markets. Now, with public beta going live, um, you're welcome to participate. You don't have to, but I think that everyone should sign up. You still have a few days, so you don't have to do that right now. And you have our rewards to earn. You could earn NFTs. So that's something really exciting. All right. So to finish up this video, I do want to touch on how... DeFi has exploded on now Binance Smart Chain. And I think that's really an uh, important thing to note here compared to uh, just being on Ethereum. It's no longer just Ethereum. Binance Smart Chain is blowing up. Why? Because it's using the Ethereum virtual machine. And that's allowing Ethereum smart contracts. Yes, Binance Smart Chain is centralized. It does proof of stake. Uh, it doesn't have an Oracle system built in. Flare Network is superior to it, and it doesn't have the F assets bringing over all the value. So, but it goes to show Binance Smart Chain is getting all the activity. Not Cardano, not Cosmos, not Avalanche, not Polkadot. They're they're getting there, but slow. Where Smart Chain, Binance Smart Chain has that Ethereum virtual machine. That's what's driving the demand, driving it. And Flare is gonna drive a ton of that, because now uh, breaking news is XLM has just been added as a new F asset. So now we have XRP, Litecoin, Doge, and XLM communities. Four communities coming together with billions, hundreds of billions in value that's going to be able to be brought onto the Flare network and used on Flare Finance. All those assets will be F assets used on Flare Finance. So there's going to be so much value brought onto the network. It's really going to be amazing to see how this uh, whole Flare network develops. Like, I'm super excited because it's nothing like Cardano or Cosmos or Avalanche or Polkadot. These are big assets. XLM, XRP, Litecoin, 
uh, doge. They're worth value. And now they're going to get these superpowers, literally, utility. They're going to get yield every day. So you're going to be able to earn all the yield and things we talked about in previous videos and still use this stuff in Flare Finance. So there's going to be different strategies on how to best maximize your yield based on different risk profiles. So I am going to post a link below to um, our Patreon which we just started and we will be discussing the strategies and we will be doing um, monthly zoom calls discussing that and breaking down the formulas of how best to maximize your yield and there will also be a level four um, weekly calls as well there's been a tremendous amount of interest um, so patty xrp myself and lars have spent many hours figuring out the formulas of how best to maximize your yield on the Flare Network for the FTSO rewards, for minting FXRP, how much spark should you have in relation to FXRP, and how much should you expect to make in spark rewards for each, and how can you compound that to maximize the amount of Y Flare you could get. So these are strategies that are not going to be out there just in the open and public. They're things that we need to provide a spreadsheet for, go over and go in depth with. And that is one of the reasons why we created uh, the Patreon for this special one-on, uh, not one-on-one, -on -one, but small group Zoom calls to where we could explain how the different strategies can be utilized depending on your risk profile and to maximize your yield because we're going to have this month before flare finance goes live it's beta right now but flare network is going to go live first in may and now at xlm coming on now we're going to have all these other communities so we're going to have an influx of four different communities coming in and no other community is getting an airdrop only the xrp community is getting an airdrop for spark tokens so that means we're going to be the, we have the keys to the kingdom but all the f assets will have superpowers that's doge too we'll have the same abilities as X, fxrp and fltc and fxlm now so what they're building is truly amazing and it is the perfect foundation for DeFi. so you have a that oracle system built in that's the key the price feeds are decentralized and can be interacted with all the smart contracts built. And that's the heart of what DeFi needs. It's the weak spot on Ethereum. Chainlink doesn't solve the problem. And it doesn't solve it on multiple networks because you're using proof of stake. You're putting up stake as trust. With this system on Flare, you're getting rewarded for providing good feeds. It's the exact opposite approach and it's long term superior design then you have the xrp ledger which is the liquidity network the two-way bridge is coming and ripple x's DeFi platform is coming we have information now of the ra decentralized stablecoin that the uh holy grail video i made a couple days ago of the decentralized global stablecoin is built on yes it's coming it is a very unique design. Um, we're going to actually have an interview with the Ripple dev who created Trustline app and has put out basic documentation, but we don't have the full details. So it's probably going to be another week till I cover it, especially with Flare Finance Beta. Oh, getting all the focus right now. I don't want to confuse people and overlap. But everything that was said in that video on the global stable decentralized stablecoin is absolutely happening that that design is being done they're just changing the name and it has a dynamic interest rate model that um it, it's just fascinating so i'm going to uh, talk to uh the creator of the trust line app and we're going to try and set up an interview in the future and see if we could get some more details out of him but it's great to see the community really showing excitement around flare finance right now like this is our opportunity for as a community we're one of the biggest communities and now we're going to have four communities strong 
So the next video, I'm going to dive into the XLM uh, on the Flare network. And hopefully we end this tribalism. Like this one thing I really want to promote is end this tribalism. No more bashing Doge. Don't bash Bitcoin. It's not going anywhere. Same with XLM. Same with uh, Litecoin. They're all going to be around. And we're all going to be one community, the Flare Network. We're all getting these tokens. So exciting times ahead. And um, be nice to the other communities, please. Because especially the ones that are F assets. And if you have any questions regarding um, Flare and Flare Finance, please post them in the, in the comments below. I will try to get to them. If you are interested in strategizing towards the Flare Network launch and how you can maximize your yield, please join our Patreon. The link is in the description below. This is going to be a very active Patreon. We have our own private Telegram group. We're going to have Zoom calls. And we are going to have multiple special events that are consistently interactive with our members. And it's not just me. It's myself, Lars, Patty, XRP, and um, some very smart people are also in that group. So uh, the link will be attached below in the description. I'm Mickey Refresh, and I'm out.